Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome to another series of This War of Mine. I have received numerous requests to come back to this game over the last few weeks, ever since I finished my last series in which we played as Paragons of Virtue. We were selfless, we helped those in need, and we never targeted the innocent. So it kind of figures then that the internet is asking for me to play this again from the exact opposite extreme. To be selfish, to hurt anyone who gets in my way. To be, simply put, ruthless renegades. And you know what? While it does sound cold-hearted and, frankly, somewhat disturbing, well, I think it is time for us to join the dark side and experience this war from an opposing worldview. What good is our humanity and our morals in a war zone? Survival has to come before all else. And that is how we are going to play the series again. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and set up another attempt and hopefully, hopefully, we'll make it through this war. So as far as picking our starting team, uh, this time around I will not be including any children because, well, it doesn't really fit this particular theme, uh, and also they will be nothing but a hindrance. They will consume my food and they will get sad very easily because I'm fully expecting that I'm going to have to hurt people and that, frankly, upsets children. So, out of this group then, the only team that I think makes the most sense, the most obvious pick here, is actually going to be Bruno, Roman, and Erica. Why? I mean, you may look at these guys and think, well, they're nothing special. I mean, Roman is uh, an ex-militia member, so he's really good at fighting, but that's about it. He's not very good at crafting or hauling. Erica is, uh, well, I believe she grew up on the streets as an orphan. She's sort of a cat burglar. She's not really good at anything in particular either, aside from being sneaky. Bruno is the only one who actually has a skill, and that is as a cook, which is arguably one of the least important groups to have. So what do these three have as an advantage? Well, simply put, all of them are borderline sociopaths. Roman being a militia, he has no problem killing people, and it does not depress him. Erica has seen the hard things in life, and she also will not get sad easily. Bruno is just a bit of an apathetic ass. He doesn't really care for the plight of his fellow man so much. So really the advantage here is that these are three characters that will not get depressed and commit suicide very easily, no matter how many bad things we do. It's otherwise a fairly weak team, but for that one particular purpose, it could be pretty effective. So we will be picking these three today, and I will of course be turning on Anniversary Edition to ensure that we will have the new house, just as a change of scenery from the last time, it doesn't really have any particular difference other than that. Let's go ahead and get started with these guys, and start a new campaign of This War of Mine. Day One. You know, you could almost say that while I'm doing my last campaign, you could say this is a side uh, campaign, another, another team that is trying to survive at the exact same time. You could have both stories going in parallel if you really want to. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah. Maybe you guys, uh, maybe you guys in the comments should be paying attention to what I did in the last series and around whatever day it is. Say, you know, while we're going off and killing these people, uh, the other team was, I don't know, saving a baby. Or, or something. I mean, a bunch of do-gooders that we were last time. So welcome to the new house. It doesn't really serve any other purpose aside from looking different, but you know what? This game could use a little bit more diversity, so there you go. Surrounded in the capital by the government military, the rebels refuse to surrender. Caught in the middle of the fighting, with no running water or phones, struggling with lack of food and medications, are civilians. In a civil war, everyone is affected, one way or another. Roman used to fight for the rebels, but he became disillusioned and ran away. Erica came to the capital, fleeing persecutions in her hometown. Bruno has been cut off by the siege from his home and his dearest friend. Homeless, on the run, and with nothing to lose but their lives, they band together to survive. Of course, I can't use the WASD keys in order to move around, which I will say is a little disappointing. But okay, Roman, why don't you go ahead and start digging things up. Bruno, I will have you do the same. Go up top, I guess? You have a lot to dig out, unfortunately. But while we're doing this, I guess we can go ahead and explain some of the ground rules for the series if we are going to be playing as Ruthless Renegades. So first and foremost, I guess I should tell you guys right now, I'm not going to be playing as a psychopath, okay? Uh, the goal of the series is to survive at any cost, even if that means hurting anyone who is withholding resources that I need. I don't mind doing some rather morally ambiguous uh, actions, that's perfectly fine. However, 
We're looking out for number one, and we're not going to exasperate our energy trying to uh, hurt someone for just the sadistic pleasure of it. For example, if we're robbing some old couple, and we want to take something that they have, and they just are they are content to just uh, cower in the corner and let me take what I want unopposed, well then I'm not going to then kill them for the fun of it. That just doesn't make a lot of sense from this playthrough's perspective. Instead, it just makes a lot more sense to take what I want and leave. And that's exactly how that is going to work. So just be aware, I know that there are going to be people who want me to uh, murder everything that moves. And maybe there's a time and a place for that, but it's not very effective as far as this uh, series is concerned, and frankly, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, keep in mind, every time you every time you kill someone or steal or something like that, normal characters will start to get sad. It's a moral penalty. You know, suppose those children come to the house and they're like, please, we're hungry, and we turn them away. That would make the average person quite sad, would it not? Well, in this game, it's the same thing. So, there's no reason to push our luck with this. At least not as far as I am concerned. But that's going to be a basic ground rule. Otherwise, we're going to be selfish. We're never going to give of ourselves to help someone unless we think it's going to benefit us. Which kind of means that we're really still not being... We're still not being helpful. We're just kind of looking out for number one. I mean, it's entirely possible that I will actually end up helping someone at least once or twice in this series. Uh, only because of the immediate payout. For example, if you go to Sniper's Junction, there's that one man who's uh, been shot. Ooh, broken pistol, that's useful. The man who's been shot who needs to get to his uh, his baby's son, and he asks for help. Well, you can't really, you, you kind of have to help him. The way you help him is by opening up a shortcut, and that's going to happen no matter what. I need that shortcut. So, um, I don't mind doing that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spite that opportunity just because it's a good action. And also, he gives you a reward of like five jewelry. That's incredibly good. So again, for selfish reasons, since killing him won't get me anything, I might as well help him in order to get a payout. So just be aware that that also can happen, and I will not apologize if it does. Alright. Erica, how are you doing? Doing just fine. Thank you for opening all of that up. Um, can't really dig anything else right now until we get a crowbar, which is why I'm having Bruno work on that. Why don't you go take a look at these refuse piles over here? And we'll see if there are any goodies. So far, we haven't had a bad haul. A broken pistol pretty early on is very useful. I mean, it's going to take a bit of work to repair it, but if we can, an early game gun, not bad. A little bit of food so far. Not a lot in the way of building materials, water, sugar. It's kind of meh. But it could be a lot worse, I think. So, I'm going to count my blessings where I can. Some more components, a bit of water, a bit more lumber, good. The more, uh, more building materials we have in the early game, probably the better. Bruno, you're done with that. Excellent. Let's go ahead and build up a crowbar. This will take 10 components, but we are going to need it in order to access the rest of the stuff in this house, so I think that's going to be just fine. Oh my god! We got a knife already? That's amazingly useful. Wow! Okay. I was kind of thinking that we would have to uh, use up a bunch of weapon parts to create a weapon, but it turns out they're going to give me one pretty much for free. That's incredibly good. Very nice. No, Roman, please finish finish that pile. Erica, why don't you come here? Roman, go down over, I don't know, let's say right here. Right next to this cabinet. Yeah, a knife early on gives us some options as far as being aggressive, especially in Roman's hands. He is really, really handy with a knife. A little bit scary, I know, but he is. I actually think that maybe we ought to take a little bit of time to... Um, Look through the biographies of all these characters. Let's just go ahead and get started on this door before I do that. There we go. Roman, what did you find? You found medicine and a couple of bullets. Okay. Not bad. Medicine, of course, being a staple item, we will need to keep ourselves healthy. Bullets being useful if we do repair this pistol pretty early on. All right. Roman, then, I guess you can go, um... I have no idea what I want you to do. Yeah, Erica, go ahead and open this thing up. Bruno, start digging. So, let's take a look at their bio pages. Bruno, he is a good cook, and he is also a smoker. The good cook thing is useful because it means that he can uh, cook food using less water and fuel. It also means that he is a little bit more efficient with his water and fuel when making moonshine, which is also quite useful. In fact, um, he's going to be creating probably our main export in this uh, Civil War economy. We can't really manufacture things for cheap, you know, using Marin. We can't haul a ton of extra goods, so we're going to have to be very careful using our resources to create some trade goods and get as much as we can through the trader. And to that extent, Bruno can be, Bruno can be useful. Before the war, I used to own a restaurant. 
I even have my own TV show, Bruno's Cuisine. I'm sure you've seen it. No, I have not, but okay. I visited beautiful places where I was filmed cooking exquisite dishes. All that seems of no importance now, don't you think? Nowadays, you're lucky if you get your hands on some canned meat or a bag of rice. And who knows how long this war is going to last. Well, it should be somewhere around 30 to 35 days, if memory serves, but uh, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, Roman, what is your story? He is also trained in combat, so he's very effective in combat. Using a knife, for example, can be a one-hit kill, uh, especially if he's backstabbing. He is also a smoker, and that's going to be actually very important for us to remember, because even though Roman does not get sad easily and feels very little remorse for his actions, if he ever does become sad and depressed and also suffers from withdrawal symptoms from his uh, nicotine habits, he can become abusive. Roman's actually quite dangerous in the sense that if he gets depressed, he can injure other members of your party. Quite dangerous in that sense, but uh, I think that's a fine line we're going to have to uh, cross. I never thought I'd end up running and hiding from my buddies, but that's how things turned out. We were like brothers, and now I'm a dead man to them. My crew had ruled the hood since we were teens, until just before the war. Then some of us got drafted, like my best friend Leon. Others like me volunteered for the militia. It was going to be the ultimate showdown, and every single one of us wanted a piece of the action. Yeah, a bunch of bored teenage boys uh, growing up in a harsh environment. Not a, not a, not a good recipe for success, if you ask me. Erica, I also need you to start digging through the rubble, and we will also make sure that we manufacture a bed. Uh, where do we want to place this? Good question. We'll make this our kitchen. This is our crafting area. Let's go ahead and place the beds up here. I think somewhere readily accessible from the main door to save some time. Erica, what's your story? She is also a smoker. Oh, good. Three addicts. That's going to work out well for me, but she does sneak quietly. Like I said, she's a bit of a cat burglar. She can move around, making very little noise. Very useful if we don't want to go in guns blazing and instead steal something. I'm a simple girl from the hood, and I know life. Street raised me more than my father did. That old sot beat me whenever he felt like it and knew how to make it hurt. That's all over now. He bit the dust in the first days of the war. I've been a cat burglar since I turned 14. You know how it is. I'm better at it than anyone you know, and I can sneak like a fox. You'd be a fool kicking me out. Well, good news, I have no intention of kicking you out of anything. But, you do sound like you will be useful. Now, here's one of the big downsides of this team that makes me kind of sad. None of them are very good haulers. They're not the worst haulers, they are certainly far worse, but they're not great. I think each of them has an uh, inventory capacity of 10 which is lackluster to say the least. Uh, having someone like Marco last time who has an inventory capacity of 12, I mean, you may not think that two more inventory slots is very important, but you'd be surprised. It can really make quite the difference. Really, really can. So, kind of sad about that, but oh well. Um, it's entirely possible that someone else will try to join our team later, and perhaps we'll have someone with good carrying capacity. But then we risk perhaps getting a member of the team who's, um, well, you know, has those pesky morals and stuff and might object to what I've been doing, so... That could also be a bit of a problem, we're not too sure yet. Do I want to make anything here right now? I don't think so. The weapon parts will be very useful for creating uh, saw blades, and also creating uh, that gun, whenever we are able to upgrade this thing here. The improved metal workshop. Now for this we would need a few parts, and a heck of a lot more building materials. To be honest, I'm not convinced that we're going to be able to get those too early on. Odds are pretty good that instead, we're probably going to have to go for a Moonshine still pretty early on here, and start making Moonshine to trade it off the first time the trader comes by, and that's how we're going to get the most of our building materials. But keep in mind, we also will need to have a crude stove. Can't really help that, so... Oh well, I guess for now, let's just wait until Bruno's done. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and open up this... I don't know what this is. Some sort of cabinet thing. Looks like a tools cabinet. See if there's anything useful inside, then there's one more to open up here, and that will be it. And then we can find out what random map we've obtained today. A little bit more sugar, some jewelry for trading, very useful, and another bullet. Okay, only three bullets so far. Not amazing, but it will have to do. Erica, let's open this thing up and see what else we can get. I imagine Erica is also very handy with a lockpick, which also could be quite useful. Keep in mind, if we ever want to steal something, we may not want to bring... The crowbar, we may instead want to bring some lockpicks so we can sneak somewhere very easily. Hey, more bullets. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Six bullets is actually pretty substantial. 
that's enough to chase away any intruders um, as soon as we can fix up this pistol, which will not be too hard. Also, some bandages. So we have a couple of food, medicine, bandages, some tools. The uh, This is a pretty standard haul. Honestly, we just have less building materials than usual, and we have a knife and a broken pistol. Very combat-focused, but okay. Let's go ahead and end the day. See what we have today. We have the ghost house, the ruined villa, and the semi-detached house. Hmm. I mean, that's not bad. Um, these should be very low risk. Semi-detached house, I think, will have some. Is this the one where there are those three women that are hanging out together and will shoot intruders? I think so. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. Ghost house, however, should be open for us. So if we bring along a crowbar... I think we're more or less good to go. I think we also need a saw blade to go here too, but obviously we don't have access to those yet. And then there's the ruined villa. There, uh, we could try to steal from someone. Oh, this is our first opportunity at some theft, is it? Well, now that's fun. Uh, let's see. They don't want to trade. If we're desperate, we could try to steal from them. Hmm. That might be a little bit more risky than I'm willing to take right now. Instead, let's go to the ghost house just to get ourselves started. I think I'll have uh, Roman stay back and guard. I think I'll have Erica probably scavenge today. And Bruno can sleep. And yes, as you can see, everybody only has a carrying inventory of 10. A little bit lackluster, unfortunately, but okay. Let's go ahead and bring that crowbar. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to need it. Thank you, Erica. And let's see what we can find. Hopefully something good. Let's see. Uh, I do recognize this place. These should just be rats, although under normal circumstances, I would be nervous that this means... Um, there's somebody here. Obviously, we know that there's not, but still. Uh, let's go ahead and jump down here, and we'll open this thing up. So, yeah, not a lot to be had here. Now, if you don't know, in this war of mine, uh, the maps at the beginning of a new campaign are always randomized. I do not know which um, buildings I'm going to run into. It does not. I do not know which events each of these sites are going to have. You know, the, uh, the hotel, for example, could have those um, army men who are going to murder an innocent civilian, and we could take our wrath out on them, or it could have the snipers. I'm not going to know until I get there. All right, we've already got a whole bunch of building materials, and I really do think that getting building materials is the most important thing for us right now. But since we did bring the crowbar along, let's see if there's anything we want to open up. Okay, some more weapon parts, um, regular parts, electrical components, very helpful. Some water, if we do need it. So far, this isn't a terrible place. But obviously, we are missing a saw blade, so we can't take full advantage of this place quite yet. You know, you'd think that it'd be better to just run up these stairs rather than climb up, but... Okay, she is resourceful. I will give her that. Take a look at the fridge. There's usually some food in here somewhere. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is fantastic. Sure enough. All right. Four uh, raw food, some vegetables. Very good if we can get ourselves a stove. 30 sugar? That should keep us stocked with moonshine for a very long time. I will have to come back and get that probably pretty soon. Let's go ahead and open up this boarded door. We'll also crowbar our way through here. That way we don't have to bring the crowbar next time and we can save ourselves a valuable inventory slot. Uh, anything in here besides rats? Well, there's a note. What does this say? Dear Subira. I don't know. Just when I managed to reach this country we thought to be safe, it too was plunged into war. Don't worry, though. I'm fine. I write this letter waiting for a man who can smuggle me to safety in his boat. I will then apply for the asylum, and as soon as I can get it, I will bring you here, and we'll be together again, away from war and misery. Hang on and pray for me. Coffee. Coffee. I... Mm. So does that imply, then, that the uh, smuggler event is on this map? I guess we'll find out later. But that's good to know. If we were able to get ourselves, um, oh gosh, what is it, eight jewelry or something like that, we would be able to end this campaign early and get smuggled away out of the city and win the campaign that way. I'm not going to do that no matter what because, one, I don't know that they're there and I'm gonna, probably going to trade away my uh, jewelry uh, for building materials so I can survive until that point. But even then, I don't, I don't think that's a very fun way to end this series. Pretty confident you guys aren't going for a speed run. You want to see as much of this as you can, so... There we go. Lots of weapon parts, and also some moonshine. Very good to know, because when I come back here, there's a good chance the trader will come back on day, I think, three? So having some trade goods could be worth a couple extra stacks of materials. Something I'll definitely have to do, but for now, let's go ahead and leave. We'll probably go back to that site tonight again, honestly. There's enough useful stuff 
then I could justify that. I would love nothing better than to get a saw blade, though. So if we can find a way to upgrade our workshop, that'd be excellent. I'm not sure we're going to get that lucky, though. She got a really good haul. Yes. Yes, lots of lumber, lots of uh, components. Well, mostly components, but that's really what we needed anyway. You go ahead and sleep for a while. I know Roman's going to be tired, but let's go ahead and see if we can't upgrade this thing. Not convinced that we're going to be able to. Don't forget that by day three, we're probably going to need to have a stove as well. Yeah, we don't have enough components. Darn. That's a real shame, um, but I don't. Th I, I think it can't be helped. We're probably going to have to build that stove first. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now, uh, because I know in a couple of days, people are going to get very hungry, and if I can't feed them, that becomes a problem. We're going to need it. Let's go ahead and get started on this. But tonight, tonight I know there's something good. Some moonshine, other tradable things. I just can't go in with a saw blade today, and, well, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Absolutely. We're lucky it's not cold outside. Is that luck? I mean, I don't know. What season is it? You know, the game the game goes by in, like, 30 days. It says that you're, like, in this uh, Civil War for, like, a month. And yet, somehow, somehow you seem to go through all four seasons in that time. It's never made a lot of sense to me, but there you go. So I could spend this to get a Moonshine still early. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I know I wanted to get the saw blades and stuff, but the sooner we can get started on this moonshine, probably the better. Because I definitely will be able to use that for trading if the trader does come by tomorrow. And we do have Bruno. So we can make that a little bit more efficiently than we could with, well, anyone else. And we really do need to consider what our economy is going to be for this game, because uh, in this particular campaign, you know, as I said, we don't have Marin, we don't have uh, Marco, we don't have people who are really good at hauling, who are really good traders, who are really efficient with their building materials. We only have Bruno, who's good at making moonshine, so that's obvious for us, but we also have two people who are good at theft and combat. We're probably going to have to rely a little bit on combat, just to, um... Hmm... Let me fuel here. We're probably going to have to rely a little bit on combat to make some money, to get materials, get weapons. You know, something like that that we can trade away just to survive. That's going to be important for us, I think. It's not, you know, optimal. I generally prefer trading in this game. But it's what we're going to have to work with. To be honest, I actually think that the Renegade campaign is going to be a lot tougher than the uh, Paragons of Virtue. Simply because, well, we're going to have to be kind of evil and there's a risk of people killing themselves if they get too depressed, but... Obviously, I'd rather not have to deal with that. Alright, well, as soon as Erica gets up at about 12, well, maybe about 11, 11.30, we'll have him take a nap so he's rested before the next night. One bed is enough to make sure everyone is rested if you have three party members. Of course, you'll need a second bed once you have a fourth, but for now, this is not too bad. And as long as Roman is here with a knife, I'm not especially worried about people coming to rob me. At least not at this stage of the game, so... I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's go ahead and end the day. We'll have Erica once again go out scavenging. You'll be on guard. You'll sleep. We're going to go back to the ghost house. This time we are not going to bring a crowbar. We're instead going to gather up everything we can in this uh, small map into one big pile so I can take inventory. And I will go ahead and skip ahead so you don't have to watch all of that because, well, it's a little bit boring for you guys, isn't it? You know one thing that's always creeped me out about this game? is that uh, all the doors in these places gets closed somehow overnight. You can come back the next day and someone's come by and closed all the doors. How does that work exactly? Nobody knows, but all right. I've cleared out the house of uh, everything except for what's behind that uh, barred door. Mm. And I know that there is a medical cabinet back here, so I guarantee you coming back here will be worth it at some point. But for now, let's go ahead and see what's in our inventory. We have... Plenty of food, some medicine, useful for trading. Uh, I'll go ahead and take the moonshine, definitely. We're going to want to trade that away. I could get some more water and sugar, and that would be useful for making a bit more moonshine. So let's take one stack of each of those. The question now is, do I want to take the food now? I don't think we're going to be hungry quite yet. We're also very low on components. We're not going to be able to get too many more building materials here. There's some useful stuff, don't get me wrong. Books will be useful to keep people happy. Electrical components, parts, that's necessary. Weapons, parts, good. Bullets. Even some cigarettes, which we could use. I think we have to stick mostly to trade goods here, to be honest, because if there's not a lot of building materials left, then that's kind of what I have to survive. So let's go ahead and grab the herbal meds. I can trade those away easily enough. Uh, we'll definitely take the food. 
Um, hmm. I guess I'll go ahead and take a stack of components, a couple stacks of lumber, and uh, there's no more water to take, unfortunately. I will need that to make food later. Hmm. Don't want to take the cigarettes yet, although that is useful to us to keep people happy. Could take the parts, I guess? I don't think I need the weapon parts right now. Let's go ahead and take just this for the time being. A lot of trade goods, some food to keep us going. Not a lot in the way of building materials, which makes me quite sad, but... Oh well, that's what we have for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, though. I know it's only been a couple of days. Uh, typically, I try to get through two or three nights per video. That's what I did in the last series, and that's what I will continue to do. But for now, I think our time is up. So thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you are excited for this series, this war of mine, Ruthless Renegades. It's going to be interesting, no doubt about it. And, uh, well, I'm kind of curious to see uh, how many people we end up having to hurt in order to survive through this war. It's going to be bloody, I have no doubt about it. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>